I'm Adrian, he's Shane. We collectively are the Outlaws. Well, no, we're slabbing the Outlaws, which is a BBC show you can find on BBC iPlayer as we speak for something like 10 months, isn't it? I think I saw. Is it really? That's, yeah. That's if you're in the UK or outside the UK, you might have to splash the cash to uh, get a hold of anything on BBC iPlayer or you might find it on BBC America if you're out there, etc, etc. But all of that will be in the blurb written by his nibster, Shane himself. So I'm in the southeast of England. I'm Adrian Lacey. I am also going to introduce you to Shane O'Connor, who is in the Midlands of the England. I am uh, I'm 27. I'm Sagittarius. <laughs> you, you are no such age. <laughs> you might have been half a lifetime ago. I like uh, anyway, collectively, in the woods. we are the, we are the comedy slobs. He's married. Don't listen to him. <laughs> um, and I'm spoken for or spoken at at least. So um, between us, um, we're in a dysfunctional marriage, but with each other. And this is the 174th edition of the Comedy Slab. Take our advice. Don't have a bet amongst yourselves and say, wouldn't it be good if we came up with the idea of, for a podcast? Because two or three years later, you could still be doing the darn thing. Yeah. And it, I, there's I better ways to spend time. For a second, I thought you were going to say, do yourself a favour and don't listen to the other 170. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to undersell it that much. No, <laughs> we think they're good, actually, but I'm just trying to find a, an excuse not to do the show, but I, I'm in too deep now. We've, we've, it's kind of like um, it's like a kind of maze, isn't it? We've got in so far that we just can't get out again there. So. Yeah, yeah. We're amazed. So, um, anyway, we've only got ourselves to blame. But uh, if you could join us on this comedy journey and all the archive, all 173 back issues are available uh, out there in Cyberland. So before we get to um, The Outlaws, which I'll just very briefly say is uh, written by and st or co-written and um, by, co-written by and starring, Please rearrange these words into some kind of semblance of sense. Uh, Stephen Merchant, he of the office fame, the original British office, and um, it is set in the West Country, and we will get into more details a bit later on, and we'll have two audio clips from it. Slightly unusual in that it's an hour long. If you're listening last week, I had to get special permission from the Shanester um, because we're so used to uh, slabbing generally half-hour shows, except when he goes over that limit it's all right if he does it but if i do it i have to get special permission um but uh, i hope you can put an hour aside um because you might just find it a very good investment i also think uh, you'll find the next 45 minutes or there about um, a good investment too we start though with some comedy news as is our want or won't and we will it's not like us to promote another podcast, but in this case, we'll make an exception. Um, it's a podcast really asking about um, parental love. It's not very often that features in a comedy environment. The name of the podcast is Getting My Dad to Say I Love You, uh, which is fronted by comedian Chris Martin. Uh, that's not he of Coldplay, by the way, but he is these days based in um, Los Angeles. But um, just setting the scene quickly, and then I'll get to Shane and, and get your angle on this, uh, mm. Mr. O'Connor. Mm. But um, says Chris Martin, the non-Coldplay Chris Martin, the idea for this new podcast came about when, over lockdown, I would Zoom with friends and we'd inevitably end up discussing our relationships with our parents and whether we're the only ones in the industry to make them proud and, more importantly, get them to say, I love you. Have you heard this? Do you think this is what uh, I suppose the kids today might call a trope of comedians generally which bit the the the, the, the idea that they, that they they go out on the stage because they're desperate for love and actually it's well i've got this theory it's a displacement thing from failing to get their parents to say they love you or feeling that they didn't love them or it is an attention deficit thing isn't it don't you think being a i think being a comedian is that there is there is a kind of look at me look at me sort of thing about it i think it's quite interesting that adults um, and, and you know, I mean, I'm quite well adjusted. I mean, I've lost both my parents now. Mm. Um, and I'm quite adjusted to the relationship that I had with them. And, you know, yeah, sure, there were bits that I'd like to have changed, but I had a relatively um, good relationship with both my mum and my dad. Mm. Um, and I just think if you, if, you start, if you start having a conversation, if you and I sat down and started going, oh, my, my dad never said he loved me, 
I mean, I think that speaks volumes as to as to the issues and the problems that you have and how it's affected you, isn't it? Do you think is there's, there's that kind of the, the the mere fact that you mention it means that it's a big issue and a big problem? Yeah, although. Perhaps we don't mention it enough because certain things are taken for granted. I mean, you know, I can't speak for the entire... Well, he mentions uh, Chris Martin later in the article, which, by the way, is at uh, chortle.co.uk, amongst other places. He mentions... uh, He he associates it with being a sort of slightly buttoned-up middle-class family, but... Mm. You can have buttoned up working class families, can't you? And anywhere yeah, in the world. I don't. I mean, I, I don't know about you. I mean, I've, have you? I don't know if you've been following this story of uh, of uh, Arthur Labinjo Hughes, who was who was. I think his father's just been found guilty of um, murder, and and his yeah, mother, and the stepmother as well. I've I've and, tried to avoid it, but um, I, I my head in the sand, pretending I it caught it by accident it and read read some stuff about it. And I, I just I tweeted earlier on in the week, and I'm not ashamed to say that I cried my eyes out about it because there was I didn't see the video, but there was a, allegedly a video that was caught on like a nanny cam or something of this little lad, six year old boy, um, crying and and saying that he thought that nobody loved him, and. You know, when you've got children as well, you know, I like mm. look at Frank and Annie, and I kind of it really broke my heart this week. It's really kind of shook me to the core the whole thing. But you, you, you I, I've said this to you before. I suffered from this thing where I think that everybody lives their life like me, mm. and and quite obviously people don't. And it was just the fact that this this could and does and has gone on for so long now in various homes up and down the country. Um is the thicker end of the wedge that they're talking about isn't it as comedians i think i mean it's it's good that they're talking about it i think it's it's you know it's something that even if it means that you think actually yes my relationship with my parents troubled me and i need to go and get help for it mm. then then surely it's a good thing that we're all talking about it yeah except i've got to call me an old cynic and i am both old and cynical but mm. You know, some people say, I love you, like I would say, oh, bye, speak soon, you know, at the end of a phone call. Just saying I love you doesn't actually mean an awful lot, doesn't mean that much to me. But saying it a lot doesn't mean that you don't mean it either, does it? I mean, I, I say it to Frank and Annie all the while, and he started saying, I mean, he's he's four this month, and he started in a few days' time, actually, and he started saying, he'll say, Daddy, and I'll say, just like, just apropos nothing, we just sat there watching the TV or in the car or whatever, and you'll go, Daddy? And I'll think, oh, here we go. It's a question about why cows are black and white or whatever, you know. <laughs> um, or, or I've got to explain the intricacies of telegraph poles and why they're made of wood and not metal, um, which is usually the conversation that we had. And he'll go, Daddy, and I'll go, yeah. And he'll go, I love you. Now, I don't know whether he knows what – he knows what love and affection is because we – we try and show him as much as we can. It's but the best song that Joan Armour Trading ever wrote or sang. What love and affection? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Or wooden telegraph pole. I mean, that was that was that was a great album. <laughs> telegraph that. pole. Jink it, jink it, jink it. So I, I, this, I know what you're saying, and I don't disagree with you. But I would also subscribe to the theory that just because you do say it doesn't mean to say that you don't mean it. Anyway, let's come back to the podcast. Um, would you give it a listen on the basis of the premise of it? That's another angle to come at it from. No, because it's got Ramesh Ranganathan in. But you and, love him. Uh, I, I do, actually. But, I must, well, but you love I, him I, as an actor. I like him as an actor. He isn't an act- actor enough for me. Um, I was really disappointed to see he was in it, actually, um, because he's, it's kind of like he's one of the usual... He's Kaiser Soze, isn't he? He's the usual suspect. Um the others I don't really, well I know Roshi and Connors I didn't get that reference by the way Kaiser someone did you say Kaiser Soze he's um, he's, the, he's one of the characters in The Usual Suspects oh uh, right see I, if I had to guess I would have guessed but all too subtle but we digress anyway all episodes of Getting My Dad to Say I Love You will drop as we must say on December the 14th which is not too far off from where we're speaking as uh, at the moment um, and there's a trailer uh, for the show at chortle.co.uk and you'll find a link to the story via their news page on the uh, home page of chortle right and so we go on to the show proper what we are going to slab uh, Stephen Merchant's uh, The Outlaws on BBC iPlayer for as I say uh, as we speak another 10 months or so I think I've seen um what kind of uh, attitude did you have to it when you knew I'd put it on the slab for the homework last week, Shane? A bad one. I had a really bad attitude. 
I. Um, That's just you, though, isn't it? I took my slippers off and I threw them at the wall. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, it was really, <laughs> it was an awful attitude. No. You are lying. I. Um, well, it was one of those great minds thing, wasn't it? Because um, we we both kind of seen it and thought, oh yeah. And I said to you last week that I was I wanted to put it on the slab, mm. but was too afraid. And you're afraid um, of me, it turned out, which is, yeah. I quite like, I, I, I wish to encourage fear around me. It's better to be feared than loved. So, so they say. <laughs> you you were looking forward to watching the show, or indeed, perhaps you you can confess, you had already watched it, probably? No, I, no, I hadn't watched it, but oh. was looking forward to, uh, was look, it was one of those kind of things that, oh, you know, isn't it, isn't it sad? Like, you, oh, can I, can I afford to give up an hour to watch something? It was one of those kind of things, so I, I never got around to watching it. Well, let's get to one of our two audio clips. Mm. And I should say, I haven't said it previously, but we are going in at the ground floor. So Series 1, Episode 1. Did you see, by the by, Series 2 already commissioned? It's not mm. a complete shock, but um, interesting to note. So we should say, Series 1, Episode 1. And um, what can we say about the outlaws without giving too much away, but without not giving quite enough away to make sense of what you're about to hear? Uh, well, these outlaws are literally outlaws. They're in a community payback scheme. We are in Bristol, my lover. Uh, cue lots of bad West Country accents uh, from this side of the microphone, at least. But uh, I do love the accent. It does work particularly well. But it's very rooted in Bristol, unashamedly so, I would say. Uh, that's that's great. It's not... I mean, in the past, I think uh, a previous generation might have just had a slightly generic view of, oh, let's put it in this part of the world. And different shows have different approaches. But anyway, this one is definitely rooted um, in the West Country of England, I should say, if you're outside the UK. Um, what else do you need to know? We've got the Christopher Walken, no less, as one of the outlaws. Stephen Merchant somewhat inevitably is another. And then we have, uh, I, I don't want to go into all of them. I was bound to forget one or two. But um, we have um, a, a range of backgrounds and a range of crimes that have brought them there. And um, I've seen episode two, I will now confess. But uh, more than that, I cannot say. But I imagine it sort of unfolds. It's in reverse, you find out about each of them uh, eventually, obviously, how they got to be there. So in this situation, the person who is overseeing them, uh, she may tell us, uh, remind us uh, her title, but essentially she's this security person employed by the state or the local, whatever the local criminal agency is, um, to look after them and keep an eye on them. But more than that, I probably don't need to say uh, except listen out uh, for um, what Ben Elton calls a knob gag, if I may use that term, from Stephen Merchant. Snigger, snigger. Attention! Sit. Some people think that community payback is an easy option, a soft touch. Newsflash, it ain't. You will repay your debt to society by working the number of hours mandated by the court. My name is Diane Pemberley, I'm your supervisor, and I could be a good guy or a mean bastard. Your choice. Good guy, please. You don't choose. You said it was our choice. It was a figure of speech. It wasn't entirely clear. Are you a troublemaker? No, no, definitely, definitely not. When I call your name, say here. John Halloran. Here, shouldn't be. Frank Sheldon. What's the agenda, Brenda? Christian Taylor. Yo. OK, what are you people not getting? Just say, here. Myrna O'Kiki. Here in body, not in spirit. I don't even know what it means. Gregory Dillard. Yeah, that's me. Can I just apologise for the inappropriate joke earlier about things being in proportion? To be honest, it's not even that long. Although it is quite flat. Like a kipper. Just say, here. Yeah, here, yeah, here. The uh, the wonderful Jessica Jessica Gunning. Did you recognise her, by the way, from what we'd slapped something with her in? No, you're going to have to prompt me, I'm afraid. She was in back, do you remember, uh, Mitchell and Webb? Did, did that, oh, uh, uh, behind the bar? Yes, with Ollie oh. Watt. <laughs> yes, she was... <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Yes, it all falls into place. Now. She, was, well she, she did that kind of condescending smile, didn't she? Oh, lovely no. kind of thing. To everything, no matter what people were saying. Yeah, she'd always do that. Oh, kind of stuff. Um, I love that. Ki I did like the Kipper thing, actually, because he, he, he kind of 
put his hand out and smoothed out like a kipper, didn't they? Kind of, you're kind of thinking, what on earth? There's is- a reference to him being six foot seven. Uh, that yeah. might be a slight exaggeration, but he might also be exaggerating about his um, member. Yeah. He said, oh, um, oh, oh, but I, and yes, I am in proportion. And, uh, <laughs> But uh, and then that's a that's a deny. Is, is his character's name Gregory Dullard? I never I never I never picked up on that before. Uh, I heard Greg. Um, so, so headline, uh, please. Okay, headline is. I'm not going to beat about the bush. Uh, the outlaws wanted dead or alive, but not by me. Oh no! It's unequivocal. It was equivocal, but now it is unequivocal. <laughs> it's unequivocal uh, against the tide and against the like, great cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scripts patchy, I would say. Um, and again, you know, not enough great moments like the. I mean, like the clip you chose there. I thought it was one of the one of the better ones for gags and for funniness. There's a lot of drama in this, isn't there? Don't you think? Oh, it gets very dark if you're thinking about the um, the undertow. Yes. Do you mean that? I mean, unusual, of course, to have a, an hour's uh, format anyway. Yeah. Um, now, some of that has to be to do with the fact of the uh, star power of Stephen Merchant. Um, I don't think if you and I wanted to do our, our first comedy, uh, you know, even to get a meeting, we'd be struggling. But uh, to then say, actually, can we have uh, an hour per episode? They'd say, mm. you are having a laugh and not in a good way. Did you think, I mean, Christopher Walken, we said this, is like kind of a bit random to say the least. Do you think it was a bit gratuitous in the end that, that it was almost like at a, at a meeting, Stephen Merchant had said, well, I, I can get somebody from Hollywood because they'd done that with extras or Ricky Gervais had done that with extras. You do uh, wonder, I mean, is there some American money in it? That's the other thing. It makes uh, yeah. it much easier to uh, attract American money with an American star name. Now, is he at the peak of his powers? I don't know. Was he an interesting character? I found him interesting. Um, and uh, you're not showing any interest in what I thought of it, but I have to say, I thought it was a bit of a corker. Okay. Um, I have to say, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix. It's more respect of it than, oh, this is right in the pocket of what I like, because it's not. It's not my natural territory. And it's certainly not my natural territory to concentrate for an hour on any one thing at all of any nature, apart from sleep, perhaps. Uh, And then I went away because it was so dark in episode one. And I really thought I began to wonder. uh, And then I've I've managed to find time to see episode one a second time. I I don't know if that breaks rules uh, or confidentiality, but um, (laughs) I was left overpowered with the sense of the dark side of it last the first time I watched uh, episode yeah. one. Yeah. So much so that I wondered, if, am I going to have to come up with a new genre? Just as I've obviously, I hate to mention Smilecom again, but this definitely, I wouldn't put in that category. But then... It's more, more of a Mizcom, wasn't it, really? Well, yeah. But but isn't perhaps that's much more grown up where comedy should be going? It certainly It felt very contemporary. And it, it it didn't pull its punches, but it managed to, for my money, very cleverly weave. Co- the comedy was right interwoven into the darkness. There even it's almost the two scenes, scenes and the two levels are going on at the same time at one point in mm. in a in a bodger the badger <laughs> sequence about an animal that's over ten kilograms. You really do have to watch it. I can't explain it. I'd see, and and I thought, like with the gags in there, it kind of felt mm. to me like they'd put half an hour's worth of gags into an hour program. Well, there is and that, and and actually, I might not argue with that, and then I might equally say, and is that such a bad thing? Perhaps you're saying it is. I'm saying it's a very bad thing, and also I would I would have to take issue and disagree with you when you say that, um, you know, maybe this is where comedy should be going. I mean, if comedy goes this way, it becomes drama. And so it shouldn't be going that way. That's like saying, should drama become more funny? Well, no, because it's comedy then. Well, I'm, I'm sad, although I did play that game with myself whereby I, I, I thought, uh, what would Shane think of this? Well, I um, did exactly the same, actually. I did the reverse of that. And, and so I think we both got it right. <laughs> well, you guessed that I would like it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this is going to be right up your street. This, I, this is I like, did wonder it's like a BBC whether BBC training course. 
Well, I did wonder whether that's a little unkind. I did wonder whether you'd think, oh, no, this is a typical, um, is uh, tickling the, um, I nearly said tickling the testicles. Um, <laughs> I ought to find another phrase, otherwise uh, I'll just offend I, you, clearly. I didn't, I didn't see that bit, which is, <laughs> I must Figuratively. Tickling the figuratives of um, of the, the liberal uh, underbelly. Yeah. Well, I, I just thought the whole the whole thing with um, uh, Darren Boyd's character John, who was the mm. the businessman. He was the arrogant, you know, the arrogant middle class white businessman who was angry with the world. And uh, according to one of the characters, read the Daily Mail, and you know, it, it was all kind of very like the the. The drawing of the characters and the stereotypes therein was all very obvious, wasn't it? There was nothing. There was nothing left to um, any kind of reason of doubt with any of it. But this, you know, he was trying to do a deal with the with these Chinese businessmen, and you know, being late offended them, and and it was just oh, it was just it was cringy. I thought really cringy. But. Th- it's not outside of the bounds of possibility that such a thing could happen, is it? Oh God, no, no. But but when you put all the characters together, that's where it kind of like I thought, oh, I just I need a rest from this now. Really, it's kind of you know, um, yeah. I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm not surprised that you liked it, but then I am in a way because because. Like I say, it's credibility. Didn't didn't you have any problems with the credibility of the whole thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, again, hard not to give um, too many spoilers, but um, I don't know. It's tricky, isn't it? Because we we want a satisfying story. I think I think in so many situations, humans speak with a forked tongue. Mm. I certainly don't know. But um, I'm no exception. And on the one hand, I want a nice, smooth story with everything beautifully interwove, interwoven. And then when I get that, it's, well, that wouldn't happen, would it? Life's not that smooth. And then if it was all rough and not interwoven, I'd be complaining, well, oh, I sat there squirming because I just couldn't follow it. This, you know, this new story uh, front opened up and that didn't connect with that. And yeah. I mean, there is a reason that fiction writers choose their world isn't it and 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 you can imagine uh uh 99 percent of people in a community payback scheme aren't that interesting that's why we're not writing about them or watching shows about them that's you, reasonable isn't it do you know well yeah i mean and, and, and i wouldn't disagree with that but the, all through the whole hour in the back of my mind i'm sitting there thinking um Aside from everything else, you know, whether where the hell did Christopher Walken come from? How did he end? It, end it, how did he end up in, in this particular part of the world? And how that all happened? And you know, all, all the other questions you want to ask about the characters. Mm. In the back of my mind was this feeling that I didn't really think community payback or whatever you call it was was a what did they used to call it before community payback? They used to call it um, was it community service? Community service. That was mm. it. Yeah. I didn't even think it was a thing anymore. I didn't. I mean, I I must be out of touch because I didn't. Did you know that it was still a thing? I mean, is it still a thing? Well, that's the, that's the other thing. Just because we see it in a in a comedy drama, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it is still a thing. I, I think it will increase if anything because they're looking for alternatives to incarceration. Because mm. uh, you know, there's many many reasons, but um, reoffending rates, uh, crumbling Victorian buildings, etc. Uh, etc. Et um, and I think we do have to look at alternatives, um, but uh, perhaps that's a debate for another podcast, not necessarily this one. Yeah, I mean, we could build more prisons, but I mean that's just ridiculous, isn't it? But there you go. Um, but uh, but so it is, is, no, it is ridiculous when the reoffending rate. Uh, well, it was running at eighty percent at one point. I think it's better than that now, but it might be better because of community payback schemes. For all but, I know. Yeah, I mean, but, but is that? Because, I mean, you don't know whether that's because um, prisons are not effective or the length of sentencing is not effective. If if somebody's only going to go in for three months because they stabbed somebody, and, and I'm exaggerating, it is hyperbole, but do you know what mm. I mean? Um, then people aren't going to learn a lesson, are they really? And Yeah, but equally, also if they don't have any educational support or any means of getting skills, they're just ah, going to go straight back to crime, aren't they? Well, that's better, isn't it? Because the longer they're in, the more chance they've got of getting some help. Well, them, only they, if so. it's funded, but it isn't, is it, in practice? It's throw, you know, lock them up and throw away the key. But, well, hey, um, we're well, trading have you, been, have, you been to, have you ever been in a prison or not? Have yes, you been, I have. Which one? <laughs> 
Uh, been in a couple. Uh, Pentonville. I don't mean the sentences that you had. That doesn't count. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, well, uh, that um, that's not so interesting. Going to the visitor's centre is the, not the only, necessary. The only reason I say that is because I went to an open prison and nothing could be further from the truth. It was it was, it was was nothing like lock them up and throw away the key. Well, that was, a, the clue about... is the word open, isn't it? Well, Come no, because open prisons are where you go at the end of your sentence, but it was all about literacy, numeracy, getting them back in, resettlement, and all that kind of stuff, which is where it should be, isn't it? You've you've done yeah. the you've done the uh, the punishment, um, you know, and now you're doing the the uh, rehabilitation. But yeah, but you're right, different different podcast. But my point <laughs> is, is it still a thing? I mean, the community payback. I didn't. I had no idea that they. I think we should rename this podcast Crimedy Slab. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's the genre crimedy. That's what it is. Why don't we? We'll just change it. Comedy slab. It's a crime not to listen. <laughs> yeah, and we'll lock you up if you don't. Yeah, yeah. But how are we going to find you? But, um, um, is it still a thing? I think it is. But I, you know, whenever you ask, if you were to ask for an example, immediately I give one in America, which is Boy George, picture of him with a high vis jacket, cleaning the streets of wherever it was, Manhattan or some part of right. New York, maybe, okay. for his latest felony. Um, shall we listen to another uh, clip from the show before we mm. sound like uh, respective editorials from opposing political um, newspapers? By the way, I just throw this in, but you'll laugh uh, yes. at the very mention in association. <laughs> but for political balance, of course, you, did you n spot Jeff Norcott gets an additional materi material writing credit? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of. Um... <laughs> it won't pacify you. I know that, but it's worth mentioning. No, I mean, I'm not. I'm not angered by any of it. I mean, it's it's um, uh, like I say, it was more just hard work for me, really. I kind of, I mean, because because that kind of thing is the kind of thing that it is. If you see what I mean, um, so I just don't watch. I just wouldn't watch it. I'd go, oh, this is this is you know the typical BBC propaganda. I don't want to watch it because because it's it's. It you doesn't... say that, but I I bet he. Well, I don't know for a fact, but it's highly likely he shopped around. I mean, with s someone of his stature in the comedy world, they were probably coming to him rather than him going to them. And um, I, I could equally see it pop up. Uh, and, it, and, you know, Series 3 may pop up on, I don't know, um, Sky wherever or uh, ITV whatnot or Netflix or, mm. you know, uh, I don't, you know. It, it fits I'm, I'm your not, narrative at the moment, but when Series 3 gets commissioned and it's not the BBC, then it won't quite work, will it? Well, it, it depends whether they change it or not, doesn't it? And it depends how much pressure he's had. To, but, it, I mean, to me, it has the hand of the BBC all over it. I mean, you can see the fingerprints. It's that It's that, uh, It's that. that vivid. Um, but And don't forget, you know, I mean, it, this, this was made by ITV in essence, wasn't it? Because the production company, Big Talk, He's actually part of ITV Studios, and he's headed up by Kenton Allen, who's a former senior BBC comedy executive. He was involved in things like Friday Night Dinner and The Royal Family and um, Raised by Wolves and Mum and Cold Feet and Him and Her, and all kinds of stuff, you know. So, I mean, it has, it has got a mix on it, but you just, you just the, the whole premise of it, I think, is, is what, has a, what has the the BBC hand on it, as it were. And it's just not my bag. Oh, you know, if that's what they want to make, that's what they you know, they're, I'm, I'm still giving them their money uh, that they demand. Um, <laughs> With, without so much as a complaint. Oh, hang on. No, you are complaining. We've obviously brought our respective prejudices to, um, to the viewing. Um, although, because my prejudice is better than your prejudice in my <laughs> prejudiced eyes, I don't notice that I'm prejudiced. Uh, so it's, it, clearly the problem is you. But it always has been. Um, as you know, I I raise as evidence 173 previous episodes of the Comedy Slab. I think, yeah, I think that's fair. I, I can't argue with that. Exactly. I'm, I thought you'd agree, even uh, with uh, your fingers crossed. Well, just no, before I, mean, I play the main, the... the main reason I can't argue with it is because you're doing the edit this week and <laughs> you just edit it out. And no, just no, find... apparently, apparently it goes down uh, very well with our, uh, our massive um, audience base if we fall out. So um, I will keep all the conflict in. That's that's the stuff of drama, isn't it? Dramedy, crimedy. Yeah, <laughs> P off, F off. <laughs> As Christopher Walker might say. Yeah. Um, just before I play this audio clip, which I promise yeah. I will do, Go on. you raised the issue of big talk. Well, legally, we must 
mention all the uh, holders of the copyright, but also I'm guessing Four Eyes, which is uh, uh, the other company involved, that has to be Stephen Merchant, doesn't it, with a name like Four Eyes? Well, it's it looks like it's Stephen Merchant and his dad, Ron Merchant. Oh. Um, I'm just working that out on the dates of births uh, from Company's House, but yeah, it is that is Steve Merchant's. Uh, or St- Steve Merchant's got quite a few companies. He's got a company called uh, Risk Productions, mm-hmm. uh, Backlash Productions, SJJM, and he used to own a company called um, Heath Court, which was a property a property management company. But he's uh, he's actually resigned from that now, that, from the board of that. So. Um, um, wow. Yeah, he's he's been involved in quite a few companies, but yeah, how cool is that? That he's, it looks like his dad is on the uh, is on the board of his company. Mm. T- touch of the Jack Whitehalls there, him and his celeb type dad. Anyway, uh, clearly these people have the business acumen that I never was born with, sadly. So let's move to something I do understand, which is a little bit of audio, uh, one I prepared earlier. Uh, this is. Featuring, um, amongst others, uh, an outlaw called Lady Gabriella. I wonder if that's a tiny nod to a Lady Gaga type, though um, I'm, I'm not accusing her, nor is the show, of uh, the kind of things that, uh, the more nefarious things, shall we say, that uh, Lady Gabriella gets up to. But we'll find out from Shane after this. <laughs> well, we might be able to guess, but we don't want to be too prejudiced, do we? We leave that to, uh, to Shane, really. Um, we'll find out if this works at all as uh, an, another piece of the jigsaw. Hey, can you take my picture for Instagram? What did your last servant die of? I think it was just old age. You have actual servants? Daddy does, yeah, but you can't call them servants anymore. They prefer staff. Can you take my picture, please? Why do you want a picture of this dump? My followers. You have followers? What, like Jesus? Oh, no, I'm not like Jesus. He only had 12. I've got 1.2 million. No, look, I, I do understand what you're saying, and we've been banking with you since 1980. It's like a couple of little hiccups, and thank you for 40 years of business. Now piss off. Oi! No phones! Yes, one second, please. I'm just trying to keep a roof over my kids' heads. I'm meeting with the Chinese today, and I will make them sign. Give me just, your phone. Just go away. How about that? Okay? I need two weeks for the money to come through. The Chinese will sign. The Chinese will sign. Thank Three, you very much two, indeed. There you one. go. Thank you so much. No more calls. You're here to work. That was work. Okay? This is detention. You ever had Chinese wine? What? If you do business with the Chinese, they want to drink with you. Makes them feel they can trust you. It was interesting to hear Darren Boyd play a character. He normally plays like a kind of ineffective loser sort of character, doesn't he? Do you remember him when we slab White with Alan Davis? Um, well, I've got more in my memory, perhaps because it's more uh, recent. Um, the uh, Steve Coogan uh, vehicle. Yes, Saxondale. Um, Saxondale, yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for prompting me. He was me. the neighbour across the street, wasn't he? he? Was, yeah. uh, just that brilliant awkwardness, the... Uh, sort of upper middle class or yeah, middle middle class um english awkwardness yeah trying to fit in so but it was quite like, quite a different it, character to that yeah yeah it was interesting to hear him play that as well the the the, the um christopher walken thing kind mm. of got me a bit annoyed as time went on because i found him more not i didn't find him easier to understand but i found him more difficult to understand as time went on did you have a problem with that was that just me again do you mean his uh, lack of articulation? <laughs> there was a bit of that, but um, I, I got the gist of it, I think. Right. Honest. Yeah, but I, I, I don't particularly um, like um, mumblers. Apart from me, I, I have an <laughs> exception for, for myself, an exemption. Um, but... It did make me think about those Hollywood stars whose star might be slightly on the wane who start to do adverts for mobile phones. Um, mm. So that's why I raised the issue earlier of... Uh, I, I just... For editing purposes. I um, Yeah, I, I raised the possibility he might be slightly past his peak. That's hopefully not being ageist, but um, realistically... It- it did remind me a little bit of We Are Lady Parts. I'm surprised Channel 4 didn't snap it up in, in the kind of, you know, the United Colours of Benetton cast that, you know, this kind of, um, we're, we're sort of all in this wonderful 
multicultural world and you know and well it is i mean bristol is multicultural that's certainly reality of it yeah i don't think i I I don't think you could say it was saying the world was wonderful with its dark undertow no but whether whether it's an integrated multicultural society i would i would certainly take issue with um it was something that i would just like switch on and avoid at all costs the only thing i was tempted to watch the last episode just to see how it ends well, having watched episode two, um, I mean, I've got this dilemma because I, I, I only have so many hours of screen time. Um, but I think uh, I, I feel I'm committed now, having watched uh, effectively well, two episodes, but it's three hours of my life committed. It's, it, be, it becomes, <laughs> there's a point of no return. It's a bit like doing the Comedy Slab for 174 yeah. editions. It's like, yeah. I can't stop now. I've got so much forward momentum. I'll tell you what I really did like, and it was very subtle and in, and in, a, in a very obvious and overt, to my mind, set of circumstances, casting, writing, and all the rest of it. And a kind of, like even, even that woman who was supposed to be a social media influencer, it was like, it's very lazy the way it was, you know what I mean? It's like you say, this, the lady, whatever her name was, it's just, oh, come on, can you, can you do something a bit more inventive? But all of that aside, mm. there was this kind of Western feel to it, wasn't there? You know, there was like a kind of, the music was very Ennio Morricone sort of. Good, well, the presumably the picking up, I, I mean, there's at least one f- film, isn't there, called The Outlaws, and it, it was sort of leaning towards a spaghetti Western spoof yeah. at times. Yeah. Uh, actually, I should ask you on that. Yeah, what 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 you made of the music? Uh, I loved it. I thought I thought it was very good. And you know, it, even though it was subtle, you kind of it, it kind of kept alerting me to the fact that it was there. And and you know, when when there were situations where two people were facing off or whatever, and and then the music would reflect that in the same way that a western. I thought actually that was quite clever, and I really did like that. What about more contemporary influences? I'm going to give you a clue. Uh, rooted in that part of the world, can you think of the specific bands though that here they uh, the, the MD was or the composer was referencing? No, no. I'm thinking uh, the Massive Attack, Portishead, Axis. There was a very obvious um, scratch type thing that samples with scratchy vinyl. Okay. Um, and, I didn't know Tortoise Head were from the West Country. Tortoise <laughs> Right, I think with that, yeah, you're going to bed with no supper, but not before you give us your marks out of five, please, is your punishment. And it's, it's probably a, more likely a punishment for poor Stephen Merchant. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because, because you know, I mean, I'm, I almost feel like I'm, I'm judging and criticising and marking on what I think it should be and they've actually produced something else. And and because they put the tag comedy on it, it's ended up in our lap. <laughs> um, right. Well, can I slowly encourage you, no, a bit more quickly encourage you along? That being so, um, I mean, look, the idea is, and, it, and it's an imperfect thing, isn't it? But the conceit of the comedy slab is it's one episode on well, two occasions usually. In this in this instance for you, it was just the one viewing. You were given special license and a note from Mummy, mm. and and it's what we make of it. And uh, you know, we we can't speak for all people for all time of all nations. No. So I, I, I just all I'm saying is that I mean, I, I even went to IMDb to you know the Internet Movie Database just to have a look and see how it was classified, and comedy was in there. And I just thought, mm, I, I don't know. But anyway, um, I'll put you at your misery because there is mm. nothing more to say. Uh, other than it was a two from me. A two from you. I was going to guess a two. Um, as with, was it last last week or the week before? As I, I said, I mean, it, it could have been worse. It could have been one and a half or one. And you have given at least one zero in the past, which mm. is clearly an extremist. I'm going to give it four. <laughs> We're so predictable. Right. Um, but uh, I just thought the production values, which we haven't really talked about i just thought beautifully shot um it took me along with it It clearly you you didn't go along for the ride um thank you for at least committing to the uh, one hour which is not easy to do when you're bringing up two young children so um, i'm really not being sarcastic although everything that comes out of my gob sounds sarcastic i can't help myself <laughs> yeah right um but uh, i i did enjoy it and i think I, I think i'm is it six episodes i keep forgetting 
But uh, if it's no more than six, I think I've got to commit to that. I'm in too deep, let's say three hours in. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. That'd be amazing, won't it, if you do? I, I've uh, See, I felt it was too long as well. I mean, the, the whole hour thing, they should have, they should have, um, they should have, I think they could have told the story that they told in half an hour. I didn't think you'd have got the complexity of the characters, but you won't agree with that, obviously. But I felt it gave a bit more room for uh, them not to be the uh, the cardboard cutouts. It sounds more like you felt they were. Mm. I, I felt they were a bit more complica- complicated than that. Okay. Anyway, anyway six out of ten. That's uh, not too that's grubby, is it? Fairly reasonable, I would have said, yeah. Considering um, <laughs> you gave it... Uh, and uh, not so generous too. Anyway, what have you got for me next week, big boy? Can I just say in my notes, when the guns came out, I put in my notes, it's not only fools and horses, is it? Well, I was thinking of David Jason and how it, the world was much easier when you just had to lean on a bar that then got opened and everyone cackled. Yeah. But we're in a different age. Well, I don't know, are we? I mean, it's, that's still funny now whenever they do these dreadful programs. It never programs. did it for me and it never will. But hey, uh, another thing we can't agree about. Whenever they do these dreadful programs that, you know, the the greatest comedies of all time and they get people who are supposed to be comedians to come and comment on it, it always ends up being in the in the top five. So We are waiting for our phone call, aren't we? Dreadful people who aren't really comedians commenting. I would have said, oh, that's on my CV, to be honest with you. <laughs> But anyway, so, what what is the homework? Tom Hollander. Oh, I the Rev. Olivia Coleman. Is it Rev? It is Rev. Oh, lovely! Very happy to do that, and that will fly in the face of your accusations that I'm only a normally a Unitarian watching one episode of any one show. That was in the days when I watched more than one episode. I tell you what, uh, jog my memory about it was we were talking um, one of the writers. Uh, in one of the shows we were slamming a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now, was mm-hmm. had, had written a lot of the Derek Nimmo. Um, oh, yes, I did the Derek uh, Nimmo lame I'm impersonation. I'm vicar. <laughs> and, I, and, I just, and I just thought, you know, that was of a time. And then I thought, oh, no, actually, they, they've kind of, they've updated that, certainly, with Rev. So I thought, why not? Yeah. Um, Tom Hollander, Olivia Coleman, and, uh, as KTL used to say, many, many more. Uh, I've gone for um, Series 2, Episode 2, and the episode is called The Talented Curate. Is that just because you like the number two, if you'll pardon the expression? Or just, is there some just, reason? Just, just at random. I just picked one at random. I just thought, because because there isn't, there isn't I mean, it kind of is what it is, isn't it, really? It's a, it's a story about a vicar in, in uh, you know, in inner London. I thought you were um, going to say in drag. I thought that's an interesting version. <laughs> in a dress. Mind you, all vicars are in drag, really, aren't they? They wear suppose, capes and I suppose dresses. So, yeah. Yeah. And and kind of like you know, there's not a lot to get a handle on. It's it's all about the uh, oh, it's all about that that situation, isn't it? Really. So yeah. So now uh, series two, episode two. Fantastic. What was it called again? The edition. Did you the uh, the talented curate. The talented curate. Uh, we'll see if it's uh, curious, if we're curious, uh, if it's a curate's egg, or if we'll curate it for you. I think that's probably enough uh, curate puns. Um, Otherwise, I, I, I just need to cure it, don't I? Uh, it's obviously a disease. Uh, it's a C of E upbringing. Um, anyway, what I'm going to tell you about uh, our anti-social media presence. Uh, do join us on uh, Christmas presents, indeed, this time of year, nearly. Um, do join us on Twitter. Follow us there. Um, and we'll see if we can get 1.2 million um, followers, uh, like the lovely uh, Lady uh, Gabriella. And uh, we also have a Facebook page, which is curated by the Shanester. I go to Facebook once every five years and, and can't find my way around and have several hundred messages that are not really for me. And they're not really friends, are they? They never write, they never phone. Uh, anyway, just uh, do like us. It's at Comedy Slab in each case, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, personal recommendation, always. Uh, we give that a big thumbs up and hopefully your friends and family will too. And a uh, nice thumbs up from you and a uh, huge generous lip smacking thirst quenching um generous star rating on apple podcast or itunes will be hugely appreciated with a bit of blurb as well if you'd be so kind thank you and uh, yeah we're on spreaker stitcher iheart radio um it does do us an immense favor if you listen via spreaker uh, or the you spreaker get more app, money don't but, you uh, yeah You've yeah basically wife and two children to support oh no well, your wife just... supports you 
I'm going to take the Maserati in for a service. And, uh, it's, it's just, <laughs> oh, it's a hellish existence. You and your so much easier. If, if Shane I, if I four acres, as I call you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, yes, yeah, so, and you can also find us on YouTube as well. Um, I, I've got to just to finish because I, I thought this was a great line. My favourite line in all of this, and I forgot to mention it. I was just looking back through my notes. There was um, Stephen Merchant's character was saying that he he was uh, his wife had left him, mm-hmm. and uh, this. <laughs> okay, pancake. He said. He said. Uh, he said. Yeah, she just left me. She said. Uh, she left uh, since Pancake Day last year. He yeah. said. Uh, she sent me out for a Jif lemon. <laughs> when I got back, she was gone. <laughs> Do you think that was a especially get him out of the house kind of thing? I just. Well, I mean, even if it isn't, I just love it, isn't it? It, it was just, a nice line. It was so earthy and uh, yeah. But there you go. Anyway, I'm, I'm going out for a Jif lemon now. I might be some time. Yes, uh, well, I'll, I'll um, move in with your wife, but then I'll have to look after the kids, that's the thing. And um, could you leave the keys to the Maserati? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>